All right, we're back. Today is Thursday. It is April 18th. Welcome to the Dog Walk presented by Barstool Sports. As you may have heard yesterday on the free swim, we said uh, Uncle Chaps will be joining Chief and I today to talk some space. Chaps, welcome. Thank you. I'm excited. <laughs> so, you seem excited. Yeah. This is the most excited I've seen you since we talked Pangea. Oh, I love it. Don't get me started, Eddie. Many years ago, that was now. Yeah. Definitely. Was it many years? Yeah. Oh, I guess so. We were in our old office. I yeah. Know. Like I'm talking. Like Chicago Avenue. Oh, yeah. Chicago I, Avenue. I was in two houses ago. Yeah. 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 Farmer's insurance. We were still there. You were just a little glint in Chicago's eye at that point. Yeah. Who would have thought? <laughs> you would have had no idea that yeah. you'd be next to Chief every day talking about weird shit. Dumb, dumb stuff every day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> true. Stuff That's that true. we're going to talk about today that realistically we have no business even mm-hmm. thinking about. <laughs> Uh, before we get into it, do, though, I do want to talk about uh, ChevyDriveChicago.com. Uh, summer road trip season is coming up quick, and now is the perfect time to get a new Chevy. The SUV lineup and the new Silverado truck is all of the space you need to comfortably get to where you're going. ChevyDriveChicago.com has the latest offers on all vehicles and can help you find your local Chevy dealer. Every Chevy is a number one pick. ChevyDriveChicago.com is the official truck partner of the Chicago Bears. Love that. Love that. Love the everything's going our way. Chevy's on the way up. Bears are on the way up. Chica- Chaps is in Chicago. Chicago's on the way up. That's right. Chaps so, on the way up. So, Tavern style pizza. Way up. Way up. Yeah. Way up. Mm-hmm. Got a place in your heart? Oh, big time. <laughs> okay. Good. I love Tavern good. style pizza. Good. You love never that. know how much you ate. That's, That's true. Really I only had oh. four pieces. Yeah, you, you but eat it could be five the little pieces corners. of normal pizza and you feel like a piece of shit. Yep. You eat like 50 tavern styles and you're like, oh, it's just a little appetizer. I'll have one more little yeah. corner. What's One more little corner. One, yeah. one more, yeah. yeah. It's beautiful and a problem all mm-hmm. at the same time. Yeah. Right? Uh, so yeah, shout out to ChevyDriveChicago.com. Go to ChevyDriveChicago.com to learn more. Like we said, Sil- Silverado, Trax. Yep. Blazer. Uh, Blazer. Yeah. Jeez, I forgot how much I love it. driving. Because I just never really, I haven't had a car really for like seven years. It makes everything easy. Mm-hmm. Mm. Everything easy. It certainly does. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, Chevy then. makes it easy to get a car. We can get into it. Uh, space. How did this come about? You two talking space. This guy's on a, he's on a Brian Cox. Uh, yeah. So I scroll TikTok a lot. Same. Like in the afternoon, like whenever I get home from here, I'll go and like do a little bit and then. When my my wife usually falls asleep earlier than me, so I throw in the old AirPods and we'll scroll a little bit more. And occasionally I'll come across a topic that I find to be fascinating. Like a couple weeks ago, a couple months ago, it was uh, Supermax Prisons. Got super into those, figured out a bunch of stuff about that, and I'll just go down these rabbit holes. Well, I saw this clip from Brian Cox talking about the likelihood of complex life in other places. And it blew my fucking mind. Yeah. So the next thing I Do you know, know who Brian Cox is? No. So he was the astrophysicist? Yeah. Tech, is it, yeah. So he... I think he's like a newer, modern version of Carl Sagan. Okay. Yeah. Or, oh man, I can't remember his name right now, but the guy that he's like the most famous. Stephen Hawkins. No. No? The guy who's on TV all the time. Black guy. Neil deGrasse oh, Tyson. Neil deGrasse yeah. Tyson. Yeah. He, and I would say like Cox is in, in the media- doing stuff like that in a less obnoxious way than Neil deGrasse Tyson. And he's British, so he sounds smarter. Yeah, okay. big time. That matters. They oh, be, they yes, it does. equally as smart, but one's British, one's American. I think Cox is smarter. Guy. Yeah, I don't know who's smarter, but the thing, the way that I How like- How does it sound? Smarter, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, I could know more than this guy, and people would still be like, ah, he knows more. Yeah. Uh, just when, the way he talks. I think the thing that I like about him is he's clearly brilliant. And yeah. But he explains things in a way that can. anybody can understand. Well, sort of. try to yeah. understand. Yeah. That's a talent. More understandable. That's a talent. Yeah. Big it's, time. it's like, wait, what? And then you're like, I'm going to watch another video because I didn't quite understand that. And yeah. You go down this rabbit hole forever. So then my wife went out of town on a work trip. <laughs> now and, you're a natural physicist. <laughs> and I took a couple gummies and watched his documentaries and his TED Talks. The things that I learned... I promise you I learned more in 50 minutes of his TED Talk than I did about science the entirety of my formal education. Yeah, I think that's, I've probably learned more about, especially space. Yeah. Just scrolling TikTok than I did in school. Yeah. Now I'm excited to see how much you guys could dumb it down to me. Oh. Oh, it's, but it's I don't it's, have to dumb it down. Yeah. I'm just dumb. <laughs> like, yeah. So. yeah. But, and it's also like one of those things where like, I'll hear it, I'll think about it. 
and I will not understand it. I'll I'll keep thinking about it, but I don't I don't get it. Like there's so so many of these things. It's just like it's beyond like even time. It's like I, like I was watching this video where the guy was trying to be like, is time even real? And I got me thinking like, no, I don't think it is. It's it's like when you start thinking about like that level of stuff, it ju- it just it, all right. So you want some examples? Yes. Yeah. Like what initially caught you? Right. All right. So the initial thing that got me, and I think I might have sent this one to mm-hmm. you too. He's doing this talk, and he has a huge screen behind him that's almost like IMAX size, like behind him whenever he's given this lecture. Very large, maybe not IMAX size, but very large. And he's showing. He's like, this is the observable skyline that we can see it's a 360 model of what we can see just on a flat surface and he's like see this one little spot he goes up to a spot and holds a pin he was like now this is a pin sized spot in this board zoom in on this one spot so then you could see it zoom in really close on on the back of the board and he's still holding it there and he was like this it'd be a pin sized spot on this and then they say show through a mic the microscope what you could see if you really extrapolated it out how big it is and they pull up that big part and that whole part becomes the size of the screen and it doesn't look any different from what he just showed as like the full scope scope so he they did the calculations every single pinpoint along that way a pin anywhere on there inside that there was 10,000 elements of different lights and he said all of those lights are different like stars, like systems, like solar systems and different yeah. um, universes, essentially. Like it, it is unfathomable how big the universe is. And he said, if you're sitting there and you're wondering, how can I wrap my head around this? The answer is that you simply cannot. Yeah. He was like, <laughs> he was like the human brain is not able to process yeah. even what 5 million looks like. So when you're talking about the skyline and we've observed trillions upon mm-hmm. trillions of different light sources throughout that's how you know how expansive like when you can't even comprehend it like the smartest people in the world cannot comprehend how big the universe is that makes me feel a little bit better that even the smartest people on the planet are like nope <laughs> he was like i he was like i don't know and there was certain like you always hear about what how far like light speed like light speed is 186,000 miles an hour mm-hmm. or miles per second is how far it is. And then you you think about things that are 3 million light years away. And we're like, why haven't we observed any type of life? Well, maybe it's because they're 3 million, they're 3 million years in the past. Right. That's like if, if you are, if you're on a different planet, if you're on a different spot and you're looking at earth, you see it 3 million years ago. Right. So you're seeing dinosaurs and shit. Yeah, right, exactly. And so they would be like, there's no... Or you're looking at something that has exploded. That's just not even there. Right. Because you're like, it exploded like a million years ago, but like it, the photon has to travel through space. Like if even if you're looking up at the night sky and you're like, I am 1,000 million percent convinced. I am looking at something real. I'm looking at it. I'm looking at it right now. It's a star. That star might not even be there in reality. Yeah, might be burned out completely. Like when they talk about you can see the Big Bang, like they can observe the Big Bang happen now. Well, with that new telescope. With the new telescope. They did that. But then they also were like, well, we might have had, is that true? Yes. They've seen? Yeah. Okay. Because That's what Brian Cox says. It's an observable thing now that they can see the origin of- But they also think that they might have had the age, because it's always been told to us, it's 13.8 billion years old. It's always, that's what's always been the number. That's how old our universe is. So can I stop you for one second? Yeah. yeah. So you're saying if there is beings maybe on that, that spot mm-hmm. and they're viewing Earth and it's in a different time, their view, if they have a telescope, like, that's amazing. Mm-hmm. They are viewing dinosaurs in this like, time still, or, like, for yeah, example. Yeah, because they would be three, three million light years away. Like yeah. They, like so, they're saying three million years in the past. Right. That's crazy. It's ins- it's insanity. And they could see billions of years in the past now. Right. But it, there might not actually be anything there. And we think there is, because and that's like the other thing. Have you heard, have you heard of John Wheeler? Uh. Uh-uh. 
So John Wheeler has this theory, and I I will do my best to explain it. But every time I've looked, I've, everything you're about to say, I'm going to view it as complete fact. Just so you know, <laughs> I don't even know if you're going to be able to view it as a real sentence. <laughs> okay, because it's just like when I say it, I'm like, how can that possibly be? But John Wheeler has this thing called delayed choice theory, where, and he like prove like quote unquote proves it mathematically that when a photon is emitted, that's like the, the light particle is emitted from a star, something that you're looking at. He says that that photon would not have been emitted in the first place unless it had a place to go, which is your eye. So like, even though that thing is millions or billions of years old that you're looking at, that photon traveling the speed of light had to have a destination before it even left, which makes no fucking sense at all because it would, it like passes through the universe in a different way. So it's like a delayed choice of where it ends up. But they say like, like it would not have been able, like it doesn't make any sense, correct? That doesn't make any sense. No, it, it makes sense. I think that makes sense if you approach it from a theological perspective. Like I think that somebody who is a Calvinist who uh, believed in total predestination mm -hmm. would say that, that that light source was predestined. But he's not that. He's an actual right. physicist. Like that's yeah. what I'm saying. The yeah. only way that that makes sense in my mind is if you yep. introduce a God element, which is probably re the reason why a lot of God elements exist, just for the nature of explaining the unexplainable. Yeah. that, that I heard someone to define God that way, which is like that which is outside of our understanding. So 500 years ago or longer, way more things were just God. And now that we've gone through the scientific process, be like, ah, that wasn't, that lightning strike wasn't an act of God. That tsunami wasn't an act of God. It was caused by a tsunami. Right. It was caused by, you know, high pressure systems or whatever yeah. it is. An earthquake that's below the right. surface. Right, yeah. So we're, we're like, but there's still so much that is outside of our understanding. I mean, you, way outside. Yeah. I mean, we don't even know what's going on in the ocean. Like we right. know more about the moon than we do the deepest parts of the ocean. And that's why, like, one of the videos that I sent you last night, Brian Cox was talking about one of these moons of Jupiter. And it's, it has an ice cap over the top, and underneath that ice cap is, is supposed to be more water that is in all of our oceans combined. Stop. Yeah. Yeah. So they have more water there, which makes water, makes the likelihood of life go forward. But he also said, knowing that, and knowing that he believes that there's different types of life that take place in Mars, on Jupiter, um, possibly Uranus has the capability of certain types of life, but not life like ours. And I think that's what really blew my mind is, well, all of the things that he says blew my mind. But this one where he said, we've always thought that there was going to be life, right? Like, I think if you have any type of objectable brain you could see if the if the universe is really that infinite the likelihood of some type of life out there is just too great like infinite like infinity is is so big right. that the likelihood has to be high but he said even with infinite universes infinite galaxies infinite planets that the likelihood of life developing in the same way that we have is damn near zero yeah because and all of those chance happenstances have to take place in a certain sequential order in order to get to where we are now. And that simply is impossible. Yeah. But then there, else. there's also other people who say that it is more likely that there is another you somewhere acting out your life just like a little bit different, differently because of this multiverse, like string theory stuff that there's another Eddie Farrar somewhere else and then there's another universe where your parents didn't get together and then you know like and that goes on fucking forever like there are people who argue that as well which is in contrast the other the alien thing too about like planets with might have life there might have been three planets in our own solar system mm -hmm. that could have been habitable for life because people always talk about mars and mars is like you know it's closer it's close to us uh, it's technically in that habitable zone. They just don't have an atmosphere, but they say that Venus, Venus, yeah. Venus probably at one point was a likelier place to have it because they're more in the hab, like they're closer to the sun. They're more in the habitable zone. Um, and how, I can't remember how many, it might be 70, 80, who knows how many, maybe a billion years ago, the earth or the sun rather, our sun was 30% dimmer. So then they would have been in a position with a 
atmosphere, gravity, everything way more similar to Earth is now than Venus is now. Venus, they think like theoretically could still have life. It'd be hotter, but they have like, they started somewhere along the way because they have oceans and stuff too, having so much um, volcanic activity. They emitted so much uh, greenhouse gases through like they just had this string where they had like an insane amount of volcanic activity where it just whoosh, like it got way 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 too hot um, to to have life, but that wasn't always the case, is what these scientists say. So like we could have had like theoretically we could have had the first Earth could have been Venus, and then you know because then it's like who knows how the fuck that we got here, and now because like could we have had like an ancient civilization that. Pff, fucked off of Venus. Maybe they only sent 30 people or who knows. And that's how life started here. Like you just don't know things get lost. And that's kind of why, you know, cause now we're talking about going to Mars. I've seen people be like, there could be a million people on Mars by 2150 if they do it the right way. And it's just like, well, what is that? How, how can that be? No way. I, I, I think we should nuke Mars. Nuke it? Yeah. Terror. Mm, I like that. Yep. I like that because <laughs> I've never considered it. Oh, I think about nuking Mars, Mars. Yeah. Because it Mars has polar ice caps too. So their biggest problem is that they don't have an atmosphere anymore and they don't have liquid water. But if you look on the surface of Mars, you can clearly well clearly, but people say that there's definitely like things that look like riverbanks. They look like they have erosion patterns. It look like they have mountains and oceans and things like that, like had them. Now all they have left are these frozen polar ice caps so if you take nukes that are more powerful than what we did in world war ii like you know there's a lot more and you explode them just like above the ice caps you would create this flush of water that would you know kind of like we're experiencing now or people say we're gonna have like the sea like insane sea level rise you could create that on mars by melting those uh, polar ice caps and that would put more carbon into the atmosphere and put, and then like you could kind of re almost rebuild the atmosphere in a way. If you blew up those ice caps, I would do it. I would fucking do it. I would. I, and then if it doesn't work, who cares? I'd do it when I was like 90. <laughs> I would yeah, do it. You don't want the tomorrow. unintended consequence. No, I don't what's, want what, What's the worst that could happen? God, you shake a tree. You don't know what's going to fall out of it, dude. Yeah. Oh, so we send it into a nuclear winter. Well, who cares? We weren't using it anyways. Yeah. I think this is a good idea. I need someone smarter than me to tell me why we shouldn't do it. But to me, that sounds like a worthwhile experiment. I don't know how much money it would cost. Probably, I don't know. Maybe we should have like a, like, hey, when we disarm, if we ever have a nuclear disarmament, all right, Russia, you send all your nukes to the South Pole, we'll send ours to the North Pole, we'll just blow the shit out of Mars. I think that's a good idea. Yeah, team up for that. Yeah. We can do it ourselves. We have like 7,120 We don't want to be the only weapons. One. Really? Yeah. Yeah. We don't want to be the only ones getting rid of our nukes, though. Where are yeah, they keeping we, those, mostly? Uh, South Dakota is a big one. Montana is a big one. New Mexico. That's crazy. Yeah. there's If South Dakota seceded from the Union... It would be the fifth strongest military in the world. Really? Just from just the, on nukes? Just on nuclear weapons alone. Because of the amount of weapon not just nuclear weapons, but weapons in general. Like Minot Air Base is has damn near infinite amount of rounds and artillery really? and missiles and shit like that. It is crazy. People think they're just gonna walk into South Dakota, huh? Not uh, a chance. No. That's why I remember in our, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I picked them. Yeah. 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 That was one of my first many, overall picks. How many nuclear armed subs do we have? Do you know that? I don't. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it'd be the, what would be four then? The top four, America. America. It used to be Russia would be considered up there. Um, how many does China have? China is China. up there. Not for nuclear weapons. I think they actually are third in nuclear weapons. England would be a high level military too. Yeah. But back to the like the galaxy thing or the the light thing. There are and I'm not talking in the Milky Way, I'm talking galaxies. And Russia has the most nuclear weapons. Do they? Yeah. There there are more Oh, we've gotten rid of a lot of ours. Hey, all right. A little armament. We used to be up over seven thousand. Wow. I think that was actually a Bush administration initiative. Really? Which was, Bush? Um two. Okay. Um, so one other thing, space. Yeah. 
the guy, um, I don't think it was Brian Cox, it was a different dude, was saying that we, for the longest time, we thought that the Big Bang happened 5.6 billion years ago. Mm -hmm. That's increased where a lot of scientists are saying like 30 billion now. It was 13.8 for like my entire life and i think just recently they're they've expanded it yeah so they're going out i thought it was 5.6 or maybe that was life on earth like the first i think life earth on... is 5.6 total yeah. Yeah. yeah so either one of those numbers but they're saying that it's possible that our big bang is the result of a different big bang and that you know those fireworks where it shoots up and then there's one big firework and then there's offshoots that they also explode off to the side that there was one bigger Big Bang, and that put out different tentacles that created a Big Bang here, and then it's even bigger. Like Because once you start talking infinite, at some point it had to be finite. It had to be. And then why is there something instead of nothing? Ever think of that? Well, yeah, that's the entire concept that... Um, well, like what triggered the Big Bang? Yeah, that whole concept of... That comes from Martin Luther, the unmoved mover, the yeah. unchanged changer. Yep. And that's where the, the principle of ex nihilo comes from, which is uh, that was the original wording in Genesis chapter one, that in the beginning was the word or that uh, yeah. God created the universe. But there was from, the word and the word was God. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. John chapter one. But it, oh, uh, okay. it, yeah, it yeah. alludes back to Genesis chapter one, where in the beginnings, God created the heavens and the mm -hmm. earth. And that word is ex nihilo, like where it's from nothing. And I think that that's to explain the unexplainable. Yeah. Have you ever heard of a, because we talk about black holes, right? People know what a, you've heard of a black hole, right? Mm -hmm. Where it's just like eating up all this matter. There's a, there's a black hole uh, in something called the Khazar galaxy that eats the equivalent of matter of our sun every single day. Like that's how strong this gravitational pull is. It's just like, like think of how big our sun is and everything around it. It eats one of those or it, the equivalent of that in matter every single day. Now they're saying, like I saw a video where a guy was saying, well, what's on the other side of a black hole? Because no one knows. You can't like see. Mm -hmm. It's like light does not escape. There are th theorists who are now pushing out this idea of a white hole is on the other side side of a black hole and when you go into the black hole it is like a big bang on the other side and that's where all this like new universes could come out of and it like makes kind of like a slingshot and yeah Talladega nights yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> shake and bake baby yeah. yeah yeah and uh but that's like well, so then it would kind of be like almost infinite universes because we have there are there they there's two trillion estimated galaxies so our so you think of all the stars that we always see that's just our galaxy the milky way there are two trillion galaxies in in our known universe cox said it's up to 10 okay whatever there, there's more galaxies <laughs> what is? there's it's just fucking insane there's more 10 trillion galaxies but there's more galaxies in our universe than there are grains of sand on the entire planet earth like that's, I don't like that fact. That's, that's, it's just exactly because it's like, there is no one like, and have you ever seen Lance? I don't know if you can pull it up, but the written out code of whenever they looked into a black hole, like the design of the telescope that they had oh, to I've do, never heard of this, where they didn't look into it, but it was the first time that it was directly pointed at it. The, it is unbelievable how big. It, how big it is how big this image looks can we just go to images lance if there's an image eh. no probably not but it's it's stacked and stacked and stacks of paper and like written out as just plain text code and if she would have made one mistake one mistake it would have never happened every single thing had to be lined up completely perfectly and she did it how the fuck do you do that how? And I can't write a blog without a comma splice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, let's take a quick break here. We're going to talk about game time. I've been looking at the game time app to see some events coming up. I saw Sean Paul is at Radius. Ooh. You're going to go? I love Sean Paul. Who doesn't? Day, dude. Yeah. That's just a good vibes kind of guy. Big time. Look out for that.
Look out for that. Trump. You got anything on your list? So, have you ever been to Talia Hall down in Pils- yes. Pilsen? Yes, I saw already laying there once. Really? Yeah. Okay. Great. Like, I think, I don't, is it underrated, do you think, as a venue in Chicago? A lot of people say that, so that makes me think it's- That's what I was going to say. But anyway, Sierra Farrell's coming there. She's a great country singer. It is like kind of concert season. Ravinia. Have you ever done Ravinia? I have not. Oh, you got to get on game time. Find, they, they got every, oh, yeah, going to Ravinia. It is- a lovely lovely venue and you can get your your tickets on game time if you open up that app you could do it with mm-hmm. the game time app the official ticketing partner of barstool sports uh stop worrying about tickets to your next event gameway is a fast easy way to get all the tickets you want they got flash deals for sudden discounts zone deals for when you're feeling flexible and uh i don't know what you're waiting for you're going to want to buy those tickets right now so take the guesswork out of buying tickets with the game time Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code DOGWALK for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Download Game Time. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. All right, let's get back into the show. And then it's like every one of those. So there's two trillion or 10 trillion galaxies. Every galaxy has its own, like the Milky Way has its own black hole. I also heard a thing that it was like if the universe is like that 13.8 billion then the Milky Way would not have been able to form that we, we would not have been able through gravity to collect all the matter in our own galaxy in an, in the space of time that it was like in that 13.8 billion. Like you need something else to propel it. And they don't know what that is. They think it's like dark energy. They think there might be like black stars, black energy, black ma- dark matter that we just it's like this invisible force that we don't still we like they theorize and they're like confident that it exists but they don't know how to find it quantify it or what it even is but it's just this thing that exists that allows it's like a pusher of the gravity and then it's like the other thing where it's like have you ever seen a diagram of our our own solar system flying through space no Okay, so you you know we always think of it as like this flat, like we're all revolving around the sun. If you, uh, Lance, if you Google a GIF of the sol- all those are hard drives with multiple terabytes of information. Oh, that's it. That's the yeah. thing. That's yeah. a black hole. Yeah. Fuck. Okay. So if you if you Lance, that's if you, a lot of hard drives. Yeah. Yeah. And terabytes are not small. No. no. Lance, if you Google a just put GIF of universe flying through space nuts man or i'm sorry gif of solar system flying through space this is where it's like shaped like a bean um because it like the brian cox dude said that we can only picture stuff on a flat surface because that's all we so yeah so go to images and then yeah just click on that see what happens so like that's how we're actually moving through space so we're we're moving at like Earth and our our own solar system is moving through space at 600 kilometers per second. So that means like basically by the time I finish the sentence talking about it, we've covered all of Russia. That's how, that's how fast we're moving through. Like we don't feel it obviously, but we are. Cox said that a way to explain how fast we're moving in space, that if you took at leg height and you dropped a tennis ball, by the time that the tennis ball returned to your hand, we've moved 18 miles in space. So that, he's he's saying that there there is no such thing that an object is in motion, yes, on a certain plane. You're right. Is it. And he was like, flatness does not exist. A real triangle does not exist. A real circle does not exist. Because if you took it on that plane, nothing ever remains in the same position. Everything is moving hundreds of miles a minute. So a Randy Johnson fastball would be like, yeah, insane amount of miles, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, but like, and then it's also, it's Randy Johnson's fastball plus that. Yes, right. Yes. Yeah, so it's still like, so so really, you're hitting like a three million mile an hour fastball, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty impressive, pretty impressive, and it just like it makes, it makes no sense. And so, so does this mean then, like, hypothetically? we could think of ways to go this fast like it's possible i, I think we have to discover more stuff kind of like what we we're saying was like 
the existence of, like what is god the unmoved mover like and it, you know, it used to be an earthquake was god now it's tectonic shifts yeah yeah yeah, yeah so see, like, that's the code for the for the moon right on the left lance yeah that, that's the one for the moon that they had to get to get to the moon hers is terabytes in order to see the black hole <laughs> fucking that's absurd i Nuts. gotta have the biggest fucking brain in the world i mean and then to proofread yeah all that stuff there's just so many facts that yeah. like um he was talking about one that he was talking about was the odds of life developing here on earth and he said that at any given time that since the earth was formed that there were at most 10 15 different mo molecules that had the ability to mutate and in order for the first mutation to occur those molecules that had the ability to mutate met somewhere in the ocean. And we're talking about objects that are nearly as big as atoms, a little bit bigger than atoms, that had to go all over the Pacific Ocean, all over the Atlantic Ocean, in a time where it was a supercontinent. Mm -hmm. And they had to meet and form, and then it had to happen multiple times over the course of those billions of years to reach to the point that we're at now. And, and it took billions of years to develop any type of real life. And who knows, like, cause you're talking about like, they think the first thing would have been like a protein strain mm -hmm. that, but that alone is not enough to like f turn into an amoeba. So you would need like there, I've heard people theorize that like those two things that had to meet and then also like simultaneously be struck by like a lightning, like some kind of energy yeah. source that like, change their composition in a way that it morphed like it awakened into like a single cell thing and then from that single cell thing a, a trillion other things had to happen for us to be here and that's why cox says that it's virtually it's so unlikely that complex life exists anywhere else that we could get to or just in general in general see i just feel like that then but it's like it the happenstance Two, two trillion, ten trillion galaxies across billions and billions of years. Oh, I know. Like, dude, I have no idea. Like, if, I mean, think about how we view history. Yeah. Like, we view Galileo as being like a dinosaur. Yeah, it was only like 400 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. You have all this different information that we've just learned in the past 500 years it feels like the baseball hall of fame have been around forever. So when you're like a yeah. hall of famer, that shit doesn't mean anything. Like it's for the last 150 years, you happen to be the best. It makes no sense. And I would say that science like this has changed my perspective on the world too. Like the idea that nations are a thing and like that you're having wars and killing people over land when you're the most special types of organisms in the entire universe and you're worried about borders and shit like that, it really makes no sense. Yeah. To have all the that strife and conflict around the world when you are so minus, minuscule in the grand scheme of things, and why does it matter? But then something has to matter. Then you're in like a nihilism talk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come back next week for philosophy, chaps. Yeah. <laughs> so this might be dumb, then, but I'll. I'll ask we're all we're in there. a dumb place. So, like, like you say, it took billions and billions of years for that just to form in the oceans. So, is that why there's like, oh, we found a new species? Is that just like those billions of like now? It's like, oh, like now something new just popped up. But it's like another mutation off of a different species. Uh -huh. So it's not like, it's not like when he's saying life, you're just talking about an amoeba, yeah. basically, like a single cell organism. So it's not like. Some these two things came together and poof, there was like a squirrel. Like a squirrel was like a, like when we when the dinosaurs were around, I think we were something called like a what was it a marmot? It was like this little like like a little rodent mammal. Like it was, that's all that's all like that's where they think that humans arrive from. Like a tail, like not even quite a monkey, like a small little fucking squirrel like mammal. And um. And that was pro that was billions of years after that. So like you had to come up with that's just evolution of human evolution. That doesn't go oh, oh keep scrolling. Scroll, scroll, scroll. Right, right there on the right. Right. Mo oh the right, sorry. 
that thing. No, yeah, that. So that's fucking crazy. Yeah, and then it's like uh, you hear things that are like we think of, like trees. Okay, like tree. Like this gives you a sense of like how old the ocean is. Like sharks, like shark species, have existed, and lobsters and and ocean life have existed longer than trees have. Like there were sharks swimming around the ocean before trees existed on on the surface of the earth. Like that fucking blows my mind too. Like how how can that possibly be? But then you think like, well, maybe it's because we were in a when the oceans were forming, that was the only safe place for life because we could have had asteroids. We could have had a more we had a more toxic atmosphere at like where gases where we can't go to Uranus or these places because you have all these toxic toxic gases. And then over millions and billions of years, where the oceans were able to support life. And maybe like the sulfur or whatever was in the atmosphere that was limiting it to just ocean life dissipated and that allowed life to somehow spring up onto the surface or onto the, onto land. So like in theory, like you could have intelligent life that developed totally underwater. Yeah. In a theory, somewhere, theoretically. Shout out Poseidon. Shout out, <laughs> shout, shout out, shout out fucking dolphins. <laughs> yeah. Long time Long time Stooley. Yeah. Brick by brick. Would you let him on long time Tooley's? Poseidon? Yeah. He's got that trident. Mm, I don't know. He's been like royalty for so long. I'm not sure he'd be a good worker. Yeah. yeah also, you know who the biggest dickheads are? Who? Who's People that? that figure this out. Like how in the world do you calculate that? I, I legitimately know. had trouble with taxes. <laughs> yeah. And there's people that are calculating how old the universe is based by dust particles. Do you think they still have trouble with taxes? Yeah, they're complicated. <laughs> yeah. Complicated system. <laughs> like, like Brian Cox probably has an accountant. Oh, without a doubt. Yeah, you're right. Without a doubt. Yeah. But I also, here's the other thing I've always wondered. How do they live? Like, how do like, I know there's like grants and stuff. But it's like you still have to like make money and earn a job. So Brian Cox and they think it, they think of all this shit, and it's like, well, what's a black hole? Well, we have this terabyte of data. How much? What is that going to do for me? Um, well, really, in reality, fucking nothing. <laughs> like you're just you're doing science for science sake. Yeah, to an extent. I also think that there's an end game to a lot of that. Like you know. For instance, military industrial complex. Mm -hmm. If you understand space more, you understand the fl flight, you understand like different elements and how they interact with each other. I mean, without the space ex exploration and people like astrophysicists, we don't figure out how to use GPS. We don't figure yeah, out Wi-Fi. We don't figure out lots of technological advances. I still don't understand. So you have groups that are like DARPA that are yeah. out there that are. We've done a podcast on DARPA before. Yeah, DARPA is fucking wild. Yeah. Like the things that they figure out. You got to be. Essentially, to work in an organization like that, or I think really to be an astrophysicist, you almost have to have elements of a sociopath. Because the more that you find out, like imagine the amount of information that is in Brian Cox's head that is so unbelievably confusing, that's confounding in every way possible, but you have to try to understand it on a daily basis and explain it in a way that makes sense, while also being the hardest thing in human history to comprehend. And also not turning into a complete nihilist where you're just fucking nothing matters. You know? Like yeah. you still have to have like the emotional stability to be like, I know all this stuff. In reality, we don't fucking matter at all. Or sociopath. Or sociopath. You know, like where the, that information does yeah. not affect you. Yeah. And I'm not saying Brian Cox is a sociopath. Kind of did. But he's close. <laughs> <laughs> that motherfucker's close. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It, and then you were saying something about like the concepts of time too, where it's like, it kind of reminds me of that. There's that same guy, the Wheeler, who had the delayed choice theory. I wrote it down because he said like time, it's almost like that quote from True Detective where it's like, it's a flat circle mm -hmm. where it was like, time is really like, it might not exist. Like we're saying, oh, it's this many, it would, this many years away. This It's like, it's time is something that invent that we invented so we could have a way to say that everything didn't happen all at once. Like that's, and it's just something that humans, it's like a human consciousness thing more than it is like a physical, like a physics thing. Like time doesn't, time isn't necessarily real. 
And then it's like you, then it's like, what's at the end of the universe? How do you know? Like it's a brick wall at the end. Yeah. Cause you can't <laughs> yeah. picture, I mean, it feels like the moon is infinite miles away and it is, you know, like, but it's, it's not, it's so far. Yeah. I don't, every time I really think about it, it fucks me up. That's yeah. why I, how could you be a professor at Oxford talking about this stuff every day and care about anything ever? Because you know, if the earth has been around billions of years and we view like Washington it's so far along, like so far ago. Yeah. Washington's not a blip on the radar. Like nothing that no. happens right now is a blip on the radar. I wonder what in like 10,000 years, if there's still life on this planet, what they'll look back on as like, you know, because if you think of like names through history that like most people on earth know, they know, Ale they know Jesus Christ, probably first and foremost, Muhammad, Alexander the Great, some of these old, older philosophers. Uh, that's like it. You know, like I'm sure that there were people that they thought about that had gone for 7,000 years, 6,000 years and that we just have no idea. Like they don't exist in our brain. Mm -hmm. And so like in 10,000 years, is it going to be like the person who invented AI? Is it going to be the advent That's of the internet? Yeah. yeah. Like who so will have who, that? Who what has is, that staying power? Right. Exactly. Yeah. So the person who gets us like, do we end up having like a, uh, Christopher Columbus of Mars after I, maybe it's me on this podcast saying we should nuke it. And then we do. They're like, that fucking Ryan Brandell guy, he saved, <laughs> saved humanity by this idea to nuke Mars. Which is yes. a good idea. Cause like, who do, you, who do you think would be the most, like if you were looking down earth two 2000 years from now, the mm -hmm. most influential person right now, like in what they discovered and how they changed. I feel like inventors don't cause like, like Elon is like a tech guy, but he hasn't really invented anything necessarily, right? Like, yeah, I would think he no, not invention. I would think Steve Jobs up there as an inventor. I would say Bill Gates as an inventor. Like those I would say Bill Gates has probably affected civilization more so than basically anybody else just because of how more accessible he made yeah. technology. But I think like, of him as more of a CEO. Same thing with jobs. Like they're not doing like necessity work, right? Like we, yeah. Like they're like they're, who would be like a so like like this? I feel like was like like who invented the internet? Like it's the joke. It's Al Gore, but I don't really know. DARPA, DARPA did, mm -hmm. but but like we don't have like a there is no Galileo. Of, of That's DARPA. why I think it's Bill Gates because it. I mean, him and two other people wrote the code for like Microsoft all the software and like yeah. that's what the DOD uses like so many huge organizations yeah. that have impacted the if you look at the fruit from the non-poisonous tree I think it all goes back to like a Bill Gates yeah. type of guy yeah yeah it might maybe it is somebody like that but I, I guess like refrigerated and maybe, foods like we talked that's about huge. Fr freezer foods you yeah. know like yeah. who can make food accessible how many people are less hungry now because of because of that know, shit like yeah. that yeah yeah yeah, I don't know, but I've those, I guess like, but like all these inventions, they don't feel like as grand as like the Wright brothers, you know, like it's like what, you know, like those inventions, like they really like, er, er, that's like another one that kind of like talk about like how quickly we've advanced on things to go from a hundred years ago where I was, I was reading some World War One book where they had this guy and they had some, they had like bi-wing planes at that point. But they weren't like a major tool of war because they're still like an early adaptation. And I remember some general being like, planes will never like really help on the battlefield, saying this in like 1917. Mm -hmm. And then 30 years, it was like the most important thing. Yeah. Now it's kind of like the only thing. It's like drones and jets and these, uh, you know, long range bombers, like those, like, and to think that a hundred years ago, we didn't even have planes. It went, we went from not being able to fly to being on the moon in like 60 years. Like that is fucking incredible. But and it feels like we haven't done anything at, at that drastic. I think it's because we're seeing it. Like the ability to create that telescope that can see the big yeah. bang, pretty big. The, the James Webb, did you watch yeah, that documentary? Yeah, like the James Webb telescope is so unbelievable. And they the amount of people the that had to go, yeah. Okay. So like the, 
having that type of technology, I think is more impressive than flight because flight's local. This is, you're talking but just you how can... far we just set. Like you're seeing light from the producing of the origins of the universe. You're seeing it. Yeah. Like both are obviously impressive, but to put that technology together, like there has, there is a lot of talk about the inventions and not being the same cell phone, being able to actually talk to somebody on FaceTime for forever away, like the ability to have something like YouTube where you can put out all kinds of different information and see it in real time and you don't even have to have a delay. Like think about the difference between when we first started Napster and what's on your phone now. You have the entirety of human history at the, your fingertips in your pocket. Yeah, we, we just have to say, Lance, yeah. can you pull this up? And he can't. Yeah. That's yeah, fucking wild. Right. But I guess yeah. the difference is we don't know if it's good for us or not. Yeah. Like, like for instance. And like, I think you can say the James Webb telescope in some small way or maybe a big way kind of does go back to the Wright brothers. It's something that we had to figure out how to fly something fast enough to get it, to launch it into outer space. That part was nuts when how they, I had no idea the things that they had to do to get, because we view everything as the crow flies. Mm -hmm. You know, like when I'm flying, when you came back from Austin this week, you're viewing your flight as, as the crow flies, where you took off point A, you're going to point B in a straight ass line. And that's just flat right. out not true. You have to go with the rotation of the earth. You have to like, there's yeah. so many different aspects about everything. Yeah. And so when you're talking about the difference of going to Jupiter and landing a rover on Jupiter, that in order to do that, they had to put a satellite in, in the air. That bad boy had to wrap around the moon and essentially gets slingshotted yep. to mars and then slingshotted around like to the point where they knew how many times it had to go in orbit around different moons around different planets yeah. in order to create the speed where once it got into the gravitational pull of jupiter where it could slow down enough where one it didn't melt and mm. two where it had the ability to land and three all the equipment would still be intact yeah mm -hmm. it's, it's nuts and man. like that stuff is so fragile and what if you hit like a little piece of space debris on your way and you spent yeah. millions of dollars on all these different panels and sails and all these things to get this thing out there and they could fix it and they could fix it that's fuck that's fucking crazy too like how do they dude we can't go to lower lack whacker and have cell phone service yeah. fact yeah but you can send a signal to the moon that tells a rover how to uh, update its system yeah like for real? It is it's fucking crazy. And then like uh, this is another thing I saw where Jupiter like to your thing about where Cox is like it's so unlikely. Jupiter was like they call it a failed star. It's mostly made up of um hydrogen and helium which is the same as the sun. It has 70 moons around it, which are all the, so if you got 70 moons, you don't have one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <Just> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Grow up. Yeah. Right. But it was like, because it's, it was so big that it pulled all these other like things and it had its own gravitational pull that it could make the moon. They also think the moon was just like a rogue planet mm -hmm. that crashed into the earth at one point. And then it just like earth's gravity was strong enough that it kept the moon with us and they think there could be like because a planet wouldn't necessarily emit light so you could just have like a rogue planet got shot out like a let's say like pluto or whatever just it didn't have a strong enough gravity around the sun it just shot off this big fucking quasi planet it's eventually going to get sucked in by some other thing and could smash and that could be like a you know it's a, a real planet in a habitable zone so like all the things that have to happen are fucking insane I want to talk to somebody that is involved in that process of trying to do new discoveries and for like astrophysics. How do you like write that proposal? Like that's what. Right. Like, yeah. it's not like you go on LinkedIn. And it's like, Hey, what we're trying to do is figure out if the moon was a failed planet. Right. Like you don't put <laughs> yeah. that out there. Right. Like how do you come across that discovery? What new information do you come across that allows you to know one, how the fuck do you measure the speed of light? Like how, <laughs> How do you figure out any of this stuff? Yeah. You ever seen that pyramid thing with the speed of light? No. I mean, I'll pull it up. But, like, basically, the the the, the pyramid is they use that unit of measure called the cubit. Mm -hmm. And 
it is the one, I think it's the base, like across it's down to like the seventh decimal is the exact same speed as the speed of light. Hold on. Let me find the actual right there. Is that it? Yes. There this we go. Is so fucked up. Yeah. This is just fucked up. Oh, that's the coordinates. The coordinates are at the speed of light. These damn Egyptians. Dude, they knew, like, and that's like the other thing where. These motherfuckers. These motherfuckers. <laughs> yeah. King where, Tut's a real piece of shit. Yeah, but this is like thousands of years before King Tut. I know. There's that thing where it's like Cleopatra, who, like, to your point, we think of George Washington being so, like, she existed at a time that was closer to the invention of the iPhone than it was to the building of the Great Pyramid. And that's the conservative. What a hoe. <laughs> what a fucking she hoe. She was kind of a hoe. That, and that's like the, cons- there are some people who say the pyramids are 12,000 years old. Like the accepted thing is like, it's like, I think it's like six, five or six. But it's like, so even, even at that five or six, like she existed at a time closer to the iPhone than the actual construction of those pyramids. And all the pyramids are like, they're all, they all have, all the pyramids all over the world have some like weird, like similarities like the building of them are similar um they're usually like had an aquifer or some kind of running water underneath them like the nile used to run much closer to those um and and then that great pyramid of giza is uh at the center of the land mass for earth so if you were to draw out cardinal directions from each point of the pyramid it would cover more land than if it were shifted over a hundred feet. So if you if they built it in a place that was a hundred feet, I don't like any of this. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna. <laughs> I don't like it. I don't. I don't like feeling so small. And I think whenever you start talking about the pyramids or the universe in general, one, it reminds me just how dumb I am. Mm-hmm. Because occasionally in this business, when you're talking on a microphone, people, some people think that you know what you're talking about. Don't. No. No. Like the more that you know, I feel it is true, the more you realize that you don't know. Yeah. How about this one? The Great Pyramid is aligned to 360th of a degree to true north, which they think it was probably bang on at one point, and then that can shift over time. So 360th of a degree. It's like nothing. Um, Crazy. It's, it's got there's i mean I, i'll send you this blog i did in 2020 and then we've, we've done a podcast on it but there, it's like the same thing where it's like you think about the the mayans and the aztec the mayans specifically they had that calendar that went back twenty thousand years which means they had to just stand there and look at the night sky or did and, they or did they but like in theory you have to stand there look at the night sky for centuries to map everything out so that you could then go back and forward and predict and have like a, a working calendar. They had like the sh- long count and the short count where it's just like they predicted every movement of the planets, the sun, the different constellations in the sky. And the only way they could have done that is by sitting there and looking up. Yeah. I'm re- I was telling you earlier, I'm reading this long series on Vikings and the way that, I mean, think about no GPS. If you told me to drive from where I live to like Naperville, and you just showed me where it was on a map and I had to figure out how to get there, there's essentially no chance I'm getting Naperville or it's going to take me a long-ass time to get there. The Vikings went (laughs) from fucking Norway to Ireland using little pieces of glass, holding it up at the sky whenever it was cloudy to figure out which way to go. And they would land in the same spots. Uh, like they would go to Northumbria and go into the same port. How? Have it, How do you go across an ocean I, I, I'm gonna, with a piece of glass? How about this one? So we've talked about this on the show before too. I read this book last summer called um, River of Darkness. And it was about Francisco Pizarro. He was oh. the first guy. Who- <laughs> also a stoolie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, big time. <laughs> Add him to the roster. Yeah. So he would. They they were state. They were Spanish conquistadors. They were in Peru. And Being a conquistador sounds so badass. <sighs> so this guy, <laughs> he like led a group, and they were the first uh, Westerners to go all the way down the Amazon. They didn't even know what the Amazon was. They were looking for El Dorado, 
And they got to the point where the river got too strong and they just couldn't turn back. People were starving. They're like, well, let's just fucking go. And they would like encounter these natives and they get to the end and they're in like this canoe kind of structure going down the Amazon. They get to the mouth of the Amazon. They're looking out of the, the Atlantic Ocean. They build a boat from scratch on the shores of Brazil. I think it was Brazil. And then take that boat because their canoe was not seafaring. They built the, like chopped down trees, built the boat, sailed all the way back to Spain because they knew they couldn't get back down the Amazon. So they went, they went all the way down the Amazon for like four months, land on the beach, build a boat, get all the way back to Spain to tell the you know queen what they found. What a bunch of cunts. <laughs> it's like just it's un- the audacity. Yeah, like how the <laughs> fuck like it, I feel get from the bottom of the Amazon I feel back. worthless and it's like the old like that Christopher Columbus joke. I I can't remember what it might have been like in the Sopranos but where they're like, "Yeah, he's a bad guy." Like totally bad guy. He still got across the fucking ocean in a boat. With, you know, yeah. like that it's something to be marveled at that those people are able to do that. Shout out to the Nina Pinta and Santa Maria. Yeah. Yes. Multiple times. And then especially the Pinta. Yeah. And there was yeah. the the eclipse last week, which took over everything. Do you know that story about Columbus and when he was in Jamaica? It was like mm-hmm. one of his later voyages. Lance is nodding along. Where they were trying to get something from the natives and the natives are like pushing back. He's like, if you don't give me what I want, I'm gonna make the fucking moon disappear. And because he knew that there was like a lunar eclipse coming and they didn't, he's like, give me, give me that, give me some food. I don't know what it was. Give me food. Give me your wives or whatever it is. And they're like, no, no, no. He's like, all right, making the moon disappear. It's going to be gone. And then he did it, you know, the moon disappeared. So then the Brother, just... if I didn't have Twitter and somebody did it now, I would believe it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. But it's like how, like, it's not like, Hey Lance, when's the next fucking lunar eclipse going to be? It's just like they just knew, they just had all that, they just knew all that shit. Yeah. And like those calculations are wild. Like uh, Cox again was talking about, we know that the next eclipse it's going to be like this could also be paired with the largest meteorite to ever pass by Earth. It'll be the biggest one to ever come as close as the one that most likely killed the dinosaurs. Not great. And it's going to be at the same time. And he was like, it's, it's, november 7th of 2025 at like 4 p.m eastern time like they have everything calculated out to that level those motherfuckers are good at word problems good at it yeah all right guys this was uh this was something it was something it was something my brain is about to fall out of my ear. i'm like <laughs> I, re- I need a nap <laughs> Imagine doing that every day and having to know what you're talking about. I'm just making shit up. Yeah. I'm just repeating. <laughs> yeah. I'm getting it wrong. The old regurgitation method. <laughs> All right, everyone. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Thank you, chaps, for jumping in. Thank you for having me, boys. Uh, that's it, everyone. Thanks uh, again. We'll see you for uh, the draft on Monday.